How does it feel to be a world record holder? Well, my friends did it. I just thought they were being silly, but um, they worked at it very hard and they got it for me. So I guess I should be very grateful. Her her friend Chris, her sailing buddy, is the one that handled most of the paperwork. I I mean I, I assisted on getting the paperwork from from the dive shop, and you guys helped me out with all the proof on your end. But she's the one that collected everything and submitted it to the the people at Guinness and yeah and got the ball rolling for us. It takes a lot of to do to get all this together. Uh, give it to anybody, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'm very fortunate to have such good friends. Yes. I think so, yes. And what what an amazing achievement as well. That's re really, really good. <laughs> well, it just came naturally. I mean, I just grew to this age. I didn't do anything to, to start it or stop it. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so were you a scuba diver before, before you went in for this? We started scuba diving when we retired. We... I chartered a boat in Hawaii wow. to sail the South Pacific. And uh, we were there within one week after my husband retired. And um, we decided before we went there that we wanted to learn to scuba dive. So we started in scuba diving in the winter in New York. <laughs> Anyway, she, we had our own dive instructor and she did it. We were in a pool yeah. and she had to take us once out to the bridge or somewhere to be in the ocean. I think we had to be in the ocean at least once or something. So uh, we froze to death that day. And uh, from then on, we were just, we were school drivers. Oh. There on you've chosen warm locations today. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> well, smart decision to go to warmer locations for sure. Yeah, I can't oh, imagine yes. what it'd be like to do it somewhere cold. Oh no, never New York. I left there and I, I don't return. <laughs> so you was living in New York at the time. Oh yes, we had okay. lived there for twenty five years. We raised our kids there. Oh wow. So yeah, so um, let's tell her a little bit more about like how you got into diving. What was it that kind of inspired you to start such late, uh, so late on in life? Well, we decided we were going to sail the South Pacific and uh, we decided we wanted to scuba dive. So we started that winter and took scuba diving and uh, loved it, have loved it ever since. My husband does not like sharks. <laughs> I've heard a little bit about this. So you're the brave one that actually took on the well, shark. He, he, he just never pretended to be brave. He would disappear when he saw a shark. And I would say, thanks a lot. And he said, well, I just don't like sharks. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a close encounter one time. I have a, a close encounter. Oh, no, no, not really. She says I punched one in the nose once. I've forgotten it if I did. <laughs> you don't remember that no. big gray shark? I don't remember. Well, you told, you told me that, that he kind of, he got too close to you and he was getting up in your business. So you bopped him on the nose to get him to back up. And when you turned around to warn your husband, he was already back on the boat. Oh, yeah, he was. <laughs> he could get, he could climb on the boat faster than anybody when he saw a shark. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised <laughs> yeah, um she's she's got kind of a new goal that she's looking towards here also what's that since she's already kind of been any everywhere and done everything and oh and diving just about everywhere <laughs> where do you want to go now grandma i want to go into space i love that that is fantastic and my friend who worked on this is working on my space trip so who knows, I may be up there, but I figure I could be the oldest lady in space. Why and not? Prettiest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think if I've been up that high up and that low down, I'll have done pretty much what I could. 
<laughs> yes, most people don't want to do all these crazy things. No, no. <laughs> so have you always been a bit of an adrenaline junkie? Yes. <laughs> I was, I must have been six years old and my brother was 12 and they would let him jump out in the river and swim in the 60 foot water, but they didn't want me to do it. And I was so mad, I screamed and stormed to, I would have turned the boat over. They finally, my father just about died, but he finally said, all right, get in the water. And he was scared to death, but I could swim as good as anybody. So it was all right. <laughs> And then yes, I was very cantankerous and very headstrong. Yeah, and in addition to just diving, they've, she's done quite a bit of traveling all over the world, whether it's sailing or just, you know. Uh, oh, my husband and I, after, that's why I may retire at 55, because we spent 20 years traveling all over the world. And I never regretted one minute of having retired. Yep, she's gotten to see some amazing places like the. Oh, I went to Kathmandu. I went to all the crazy places with crazy names. <laughs> I mean, what do you go there for just because of the name? I don't know. Yeah, she's been down to the. She's been uh, on a on a small river boat down the river, uh, the Amazon River. Oh, I've river. done the Amazon. Yeah. I've done the Yangtze. I've done the uh, some other, and but I've never done the Mississippi. Well, it's right here. <laughs> it's right here. Why would I do it? <laughs> do a boat trip through the Galapagos as well. Yeah. They didn't dive in the Galapagos. They were just snorkeling. Um, but uh, I think you want to, she was, she was with my father on that trip. Uh, and they had a little bit of a problem because they had a hard time getting my father into a wetsuit. He's big, <laughs> big boy. He looked like a walrus. Well, once they finally once they finally managed to squeeze him into a wetsuit, he was drawing a little bit too much attention of the walrus that were there. <laughs> yeah, he, the walrus were looking. <laughs> I need help. We finally got worried that they might attack. <laughs> Tell her about that night you were sailing the South Pacific, and you were the only one awake in the oh, middle of the night on night shift. Okay. Um, I was, I was, you know, two o'clock in the morning, I'm out there all by myself and everybody else is asleep. And I hear a waterfall. You don't have many waterfalls in the ocean. And it kept getting closer. And it kept getting real close. And it was pretty full moon, full moon night. It was a little, quite bright. And about that time, there must have been a thousand dolphins surrounded the boat and danced for an hour. Oh, wow. And they went merrily on their way. How lucky. <laughs> yeah, everybody else slept through it. She was the only one that got to see it. Um, oh, that's an incredible experience. Yeah, it was kind of frightening. I mean, I couldn't figure what was coming after me, you know. Uh, but that was, that was a beautiful sight. I never saw so many dolphins. Oh, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. So is there anywhere in the world that you haven't been that you'd like to go, other than space? Uh, well, not, no place in particular. I, I mean, I'd like to go, you know, several even go back to places switzerland is such a beautiful place and you just remember it but um i've done an awful lot i'm happy yeah and, and pretty a lot of the family has taken in in her footsteps with the diving as well yeah. um three out of her four children are divers everyone with the exception of my father who has issues getting into a wetsuit <laughs> <laughs> um so she's got she's got four children three of whom are avid divers uh 13 grandkids and she now has six great grandchildren and one bun in the oven it should be here yeah. within the next couple of weeks so oh wow congratulations yeah, and, and almost all the grand all the grandkids have been out diving as well and sailing with her 
And, oh, uh, yeah, they liked my boat. We went out a lot on the boat. We got a boat when we moved to Florida. We just had friends that had boats in New York. But uh, we finally bought a boat down here. And, and my friend that did all this for me bought my boat from me. And she has now sold it and gotten a much prettier, bigger boat. It's kind of funny because, well, that's actually how they met. So when, when my grandfather passed away, um, it was, you know, too much work for her to keep up, keep the boat all by herself. So she sold the boat to somebody that kept it here in the complex where and she lives, but didn't have any intention of using it. They were just, they just wanted to keep the boat slip. They yeah. wanted my boat slip. So they bought the boat and the boat slip and just let the boat sit there and kind of start in just for five years, just rot away for five years. And then one day... She went outside and the boat was gone. And so she figured that was it. She wasn't going to see it anymore. But it turns out that the woman that had bought that boat, everywhere she went, all she heard about was stories about Jane. Everybody wanted to know if Jane was on board and what she was doing with Jane's boat. And so she, after hearing all these amazing stories uh, about my grandma Jane, she went and tracked her down at the yacht club where she was hanging out with the Salty Sisters and introduced herself and you know, said that she now owned Capella, which is her sailboat, and asked if she would like to go out sailing with her. And of course. And of course. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was it was Chris's first boat, and she was just learning to sail. And Grandma knew all the ins and outs of that old boat. So they became they became best friends pretty quickly, and, and she got to go out sailing all the time and was always invited to go out on the boat and even I got to captain the she, boat. She knows I still call it my boat. <laughs> 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 but that's kind of undercover. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's how they became such good friends, and, yes. and and then she got to continue to go out sailing all the time on her boat and not have to worry about all the the upkeep. The upkeep, yes. Well, that's very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. So I heard you say salty sisters. What's that about? Well, every yacht club has their group of women who race, who race little prams or a little little boats and uh, all the women get into the salt. We, ours was the Salty Sisters and they have different names. My daughter is now in one over on the other coast mm -hmm. where she and her friend are. So uh, she's doing the same thing that I did a long time ago. <laughs> and when was it? Not too long ago. Didn't they take you out on one of those big fancy oh, regatta sailing boats oh, and you got to when sail? When the tall ships were here, we all went out on the tall ships and uh, Chris made me up a little folder with all the beautiful pictures and everything in it. I have wonderful friends and wonderful life. I remember when I went, the first time that she took me out sailing, uh, I think on an overnight thing, when it was just me and my grandma and grandpa, and I was probably 11 years old, we got caught up in kind of a big storm. And uh, when the lightning struck the water, the manta rays were jumping up out of the water, or the stingrays. And that was just something I'd never experienced before. But I, I remember when we got caught in that storm, that grandma was just barking orders left and right. <laughs> she, 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 took a, she, she told me to hold on and don't fall off. She tied me to something. <laughs> <laughs> just barking orders left and right at grandpa to do this and do that. Well, you can't go around losing your grandkids. <laughs> I mean, I... So where's some of the um, best dive locations that you've been to? Well, we went all over the South Pacific because we were just on a boat there. I have no idea all the places we were, but um, we were around Papiete quite oh, a bit. Beautiful. And we sailed from Hawaii. It took 28 days without sight of land. Wow. And this is just you and your husband? No, there were six of us in all. We had um, the guy that owned the boat and um, uh, a young college boy and a young lawyer. Um, and we just had a regular crew that we had arranged before we left New York. Was that before you got your own sailboat? Yeah. Okay, so you must have gotten your boat shortly after that. We got our boat after we came to Florida. We never owned the way, we never had time to own a boat in New York. We were busy people. Four children, 
and um, lots of activities and having to work. <laughs> yeah, of course. So it took. Okay. So about how old, how uh, how old were you guys when you moved to Florida and got your sailboat and started sailing? Oh well, when we came back from the South Pacific after a year. Okay, right after that. We came, yeah. We came right. In fact, we in the week between when we quit and got to Hawaii, we moved everything to Florida. Oh, <laughs> that was wow. enough pain and cold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had already bought our condo and we were ready to come back here. That was what we did. Well, that was kind of the deal you had with your husband, though. No? As soon as he as soon as the kids were Yeah. As soon as you were retired and the kids were Oh yes, out I, of the house. You I wanted made, to travel I the world. A, I made a deal with him that if I taught school for twenty years, he would retire at fifty-five. Mm -hmm. And he agreed. He thought that was a great idea. And then when he got to be almost fifty-five, he said, "Oh, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure we can do that." I said, "You promise? That's all there is to it. Go tell him you're quitting." And <laughs> so I made him go in. and they didn't believe him because they didn't want anybody to quit at 55. I mean, so, uh, but he walked out of the office and they all wrote him notes of happy sailing and everything. They were all very envious. Yes, I, I imagine so. It must have been such a change of lifestyle for you as well, going from such a busy, busy New York um, city to having all this free time, being out on the open ocean. Oh, yeah. There was nothing to do except sail a boat. And then they also got a condo in St. Thomas and started spending quite a bit of time. Um, oh, yeah. We had had the condo for a long time. And I always, I love it down there. And I love to go down there. Oh, I had a, a, a master diver that would take me out. Um, Andre and he just loved to take me diving and he took me to every place that was really unique in around St. Thomas and um, he wouldn't he wouldn't take everybody to all those places but he had always take me to and if we were with a group he'd say just you know do your thing and be back in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Are you quite a natural in the water then? Oh, I've always been natural in the water. I learned to swim when I was about five or six. And the dive, the dive master liked me so well, he started teaching me to dive as well as swim. Um, so I've always loved that. Oh, that's really good, yeah. So how so what level are you actually certified to? I'm just certified for open water diving. I have probably done 300. I have over 200 in the little books that we kept when I first started diving. I haven't kept any records for years. So I don't think I'm exaggerating, but it's close to 300, I'm sure, because we've been on dive boats that went to the South Pacific and dive boats that went to the Caribbean. Yeah. And uh, those are just wonderful. If anybody ever wants to go dive and get on one of these boats that go take you for a week or two weeks and you go down in the morning and get all your gear and go right out the bottom of the boat and it's great. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. It is wonderful. I bet you meet some really nice people doing that as well. Oh, you do. They all love diving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, when was the first time that you came to Mexico? Uh, I was in college. And I was a delegate to the United Nations meeting from my college. And how old were you? Oh, I was probably 17. Oh, so yeah, the, you've been, and you've been quite a few times or? Um, oh yes, I love Mexico. I love to come down there. My son's been living there, so I come down as often as I can. As often as he'll put up with me. <laughs> 
Whereabouts in Mexico do your sons live? Uh, he lives in Colima, and I bought a condo there so I could go, go anytime I wanted to. And uh, he lives in, uh, what's the other one? Well, he, he was living in Manzanillo, Colima. We still have a home there, and Grandma has spent quite a bit of time there. Um, and then also, he's currently living in Pidal Carmen, so closer oh, to yeah. us. Yeah, I'm living these days, so we get to visit a lot on on our side as well. Um, yeah, it's a great place. So yeah, when when she when she when we were getting ready for her when she was coming up on her 90th birthday, um, the family decided they wanted to have a party and get together and celebrate Grandma's big 90th birthday. And she said, well, I don't care what y'all are doing. I'm going down to Mexico to go diving with Julia. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so she. So they all went to Mexico. Yes, yeah, so the whole family. The whole family descended on Isla Mujeres back in 2017. <laughs> and uh, we did some sailing. And we did some diving. We threw grandma a big birthday party. We decided since the whole family was coming in anyway, we might as well throw her a hell of a party. We wanted the whole island to show up. So I got married the day after her birthday just so we could throw her another party. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of parties. <laughs> we had, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and We're a party family. It <laughs> sounds like it. <laughs> I'm sure that's hard for you to believe. No, yeah, uh, I, can't, I can't imagine that. <laughs> uh, so on when we went out for grandma's 90th birthday it was my brother Isaac who's a dive instructor one of her grandkids who got to take her out for her 90th birthday and he worked at yeah. Pope for many many years um, and uh, and then for her 95th she decided again she was ready to come back down to Isla Mujeres we got to do some more sailing some more diving the world record that she has is from when she went diving for her 95th birthday yeah she's been diving since then as well she's been diving in the florida keys yeah i went this winter with my daughter four times and how was and how was that compared to diving on oh, isla just the same yeah it was crowded i don't like crowded dives no no it's much better when there's um less people more fish yeah. <laughs> oh. So how did you actually find the experience of um like putting on the equipment, getting out to the boats and getting in the water? I didn't have any trouble. I'm quite strong. I swim 25 laps every other day. Oh, wow. So my arms and my legs and fortunately it's helped a lot with this problem. <laughs> yeah. but uh, no I didn't have any trouble carrying this stuff, but they they did uh, help me with you know getting it on and off in the water yeah maybe I maybe I wouldn't want it to have climbed the ladder because the legs you know you have to bend them pretty high to get up there so, yeah <laughs> to climb the ladder with all the gear on is a little hard yeah I struggle <laughs> I really struggle <laughs> she's 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 only I mean she's only about five foot one so it's it's a lot of, it's a lot of gear to put on a little lady <laughs> but um, the last time that we went out diving it was uh Captain Chico Malo that took us out on the boat oh yeah, yeah. a private tour and he was really concerned about how we were going to get her off the boat and back onto the boat and he so he was kind of like he's like trying to make a plan with us he's like so how how are we going to put her in the water and she just like she kind of looked at me like she didn't understand she goes I'm just gonna jump off backwards like everybody else. And next thing you know, there she was, bombs way, rolling off the boat. Oh, my son-in-law was there, and he hadn't been diving with me before. He's a new son-in-law, I guess, not really, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he saw me go backwards off the boat, and he said he almost had a heart attack. He thought I fell overboard. <laughs> 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 oh, gee. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That was a fun day. We had three generations of women in our family on the boat that day, because there was it was my grandma, my aunties, and my sister and I all out. Uh, some of them, some that's of us were diving, and the other ones went uh, snorkeling. But we all got to go out on the same boat. Oh, that's really nice. That's yeah. really nice. I hope you got some good pictures of that. We got some great pictures. Actually, um, we were really lucky. We actually, I mean, we brought our own GoPros, and we were taking some pictures and some video on our own. But when we were down uh, snorkeling through the reef, we actually ran into Malek. So, oh yes, and, and he we was just taking pictures, and we just happened to run into him underwater. So he got some really excellent pictures for us, <laughs> and, and sent them to her as a, as a birthday present. 
Oh, wonderful. That's really nice. Yeah. Everybody's nice. Especially just bumping into somebody under the water like that. <laughs> yeah, we were so you're bumping into somebody with a you know huge giant professional camera. It was, it was very lucky timing. The family thought that I had set that all up, you know, and I was like, it was just a, a lucky coincidence and good to have friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, do you plan on doing more diving then? Obviously, once you're all back and fit as a fiddle. I'm going to do some more. Yes. Yeah. As soon as I. Get back up on my feet. Oh, well, hopefully we'll see you back here at Hockner as well. I'll certainly be down there. <laughs>